1 Corinthians, the first chapter in the 17th verse. 1 Corinthians 1, 17, he said, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach or to proclaim the gospel, the good news. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Uh, the word of God, the gospel, is good news. And as we'll see in just a moment, it's powerful good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. There, there are some folks that take people like us to task and, and say, well, you know, we all don't talk enough about, you know, judgment and about uh, this and that and, and about woe. Woe, woe unto you. Well, that's not for me. <laughs> that's right. Amen. That's right. <laughs> but so, what, what do you mean? That's why Jesus took our place. <laughs> so we wouldn't be judged. Now, if you're not going to accept Jesus, then the, the woes are for you. <laughs> and it's bad. But uh, the Word of God is good news. The gospel is good news. Good news doesn't depress you. Good news doesn't make you sad. Good news makes you want to come find out some more. Amen. Right? And if that's not what's going on with you in your Bible reading and your praying and you're going to church and meetings and you're listening to teaching and preaching, then doing it wrong, listening to some wrong. Because it's good. God is good. His plan is good. His provision is good. His message is good. And if you're a believer, then the judgment doesn't apply to you. No, it doesn't. There are numerous scriptures that tell us that it doesn't. And so if you want to not have to think about the judgment and, and, and the uh, condemnation and the things that are in the word, then you need to get over here on the believing side. Amen. Right? Amen. And you don't have to think about that. You don't have to dwell on that. Uh, he went on to say verse 18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of of God. The good news is the power of God. So you can see people who scoff and mock at the gospel, they just revealed that they are lost and they are perishing. But those who respect the gospel and to them the gospel is the power of eternal life that's the saved ones. Hmm? How many in here respect the gospel? You're thankful for the good news. Well, that's an indication that you're saved. That's how saved people see the gospel. Lost people scoff at it, say it's foolishness, that they're too intelligent, they're too educated to need the crutch of religion. Well, no, it doesn't show that they're more intelligent. It shows that they're perishing. Perishing. Scripture said it's the fool who has said in their heart, there is no God. Look in the um, 22nd verse. It said the Jews require a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom. We preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block, to the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Skip down to the second chapter, 1 Corinthians 2 and 1. 2, 1. He said, Brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save or except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Everybody say demonstration. Demonstration. Of the Spirit. Now we might say, what is a demonstration? Well, a demonstration is a showing of something. Something is revealed, something is shown, something is displayed. It's not covered where you can't see it. It's uncovered. It's revealed. It's not hidden. It's shown. Does the Spirit of God do demonstrations? Obviously, demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And in verse 5, he went on to say that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. If you believe it, say it out loud. My faith faith is not in the wisdom of men. My faith 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 is in the power of God. See, this, this takes you off of the limitation of any teachers or preachers or uh, doctrines. You're, you're not just trusting in what you heard somebody say. Yeah, your faith is in the words that God has said, but not just in ink and paper and verbalized words, but in the power that God has released in those words. Hmm? And that's, that's another level. That's beyond all the religions of the world. That's beyond all of them because they are, they're based in beliefs, in morals, in codes. And some people imagine Christianity to be the same. No, Christianity is much, much, much more. It's based in reality. It's based in power. Amen. The power of a virgin birth, the power of a sinless life, and the power of an endless life. Hallelujah. The power of resurrection from the dead. The power of creation. Are y'all with me, child of God? That's what our belief is based in. Not just somebody's book and code and somebody's dream or vision. Come on, somebody said out loud, I have faith faith in the power of God. In the power of God. The power of God. Oh, hallelujah. Say it again. I have faith. I, have faith. I, believe, I believe in the power of God. In the power of God. See, if you don't believe in the power of God, then you don't believe that there can be a virgin birth of Jesus. You don't believe that. That means you're lost. If you don't believe in the power of God, then you don't believe somebody can be raised from the dead. You scoff at that. That means you're lost. You're not a believer. If you don't believe in the power of God, you don't believe that by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your inner man can be recreated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that you have eternal life and will never die. Hallelujah throughout the ages and that when the time comes, the power of God will raise up this body, even if it's been dead 3,000 years. Now see, if you don't believe in the power of God, you don't believe in all that. You scoff, you mock. If you don't believe in the power of God, you're not a Christian. Period. You can't be a Christian without believing in the power of God. Now, the scripture said in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 5, it talks about religious people who don't believe in the power of God. And you would think, what good is that? (laughs) Why have a religion that has no power? 
Now you're talking about billions of people. But he said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. So having a form of godliness and a religion and a code is not enough. It's not enough. Not, not according to the Bible. It's not enough. God exists. Amen. And he's real. Amen. And he's powerful. Amen. Powerful <laughs> seems like not a strong enough word. <laughs> powerful? Oh, my, my. Let's, uh, let's look at a few verses along that line. There, there's, there, there are many of these. Go to Isaiah 40 and 25. The Lord says this. He says, to whom will you liken me or shall I be equal, says the Holy One. God is speaking directly and he's saying, who and what will you compare me to? And uh, what will you say is equal to me? Now, one of the reasons he's saying this is because his own people had chosen other gods and were worshiping and sacrificing to and praising other gods. Such ignorance. Verse 26, he said, lift up your eyes on high and behold, who has created these things? Now he's talking about looking into the sky, particularly the night sky because you can discern some of these things. It said, uh, that brings out their host by number. He calls them all by names. God has named every one of the, I don't know if trillions is a big enough number, of stars like our own sun. It has a name. And uh, he calls them all by names. We don't even know how many there are, much less what their name is. And just because we gave it a name, Star Q147, that don't mean that that's his name. <laughs> and the, the scripture tells us the Lord has a name for us. In time to come. We're going to find out what our real name is right. later on. Because our parents might not have been prayed up when they named us, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's some things you could say there, but I'll keep moving. Uh, he brings out their host by number. He calls them all by names by the greatness of his might. Everybody say might. might. And for that he is strong in power. Not one fails. Now, we, we saw last week that Elijah stood out with the showdown with the prophets of Baal and said, whoever is really God... Let him answer by fire. And they had a showdown, spiritual showdown. And man, they yelled for Baal all day long. <laughs> and there was no answer. And, and towards the middle of it, Elijah started saying, well, you know, maybe he's asleep. <laughs> maybe he's taking a nap. Maybe he's gone on a trip, you know, on and on. And at the end, he, he doused it down with water and called on God, and he didn't have to call for an hour. He just prayed a prayer about that long, and whoosh, fire, the scripture said, came down out of the sky. Now, this fire disintegrated everything that was there. I mean, there was nothing but a bare spot. The rocks were gone. The wood, the sacrifice, all the water. Um, out of people who study physics, you know there's another uh, state of matter 
uh, there's plasma. And that's what you see in the sun. And hot, whoo, <laughs> you're talking about hot. Well, God made that. Was it laser? Was it lightning, some form? Was it plasma? I don't know, but God made all of it. Right? right? Yes, sir. And he just released a, a tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody around there hit their face and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Well, they had gotten away from God. I mean, they were, well, you see the showdown. Uh, the prophets of Baal were connected with the king and his family. And there were hundreds of them. But this fire is a manifestation of the power of God. And that's what the sun is. It's fire. It's uh, uh, plasma. It's, it's the gases uh, exploding and blowing out, and it's gravity pulling it back in, and it keeps it together. It's astounding. It's amazing. And 90-something million miles from us, it gets hot here sometimes. <laughs> What if you were only 80 million miles away? You'd be in trouble. But where did it come from? Did God create that star? Yes. So you got all kind of people, educated people. <laughs> They're saying no, no, there was the Big Bang. There probably was a Big Bang when God said, light be. Amen. But all of that is just some way to exclude God. Because if you acknowledge there is a real living God, then the next step is you should find out what he wants you to do. Yes. Since your life is dependent, and people don't want that. They don't want to be subject to a, a creator and a ruler God and a savior. And so it's because of defiance and rebellion that these lies have been taught as fact in our schools and in our universities. Nobody was there. It's not recorded. Nobody has video of how the universe started. And all the honest people who study these things, you know what you'll hear them say? We don't yet know. We don't yet understand. Well, that's that's honest person there. It didn't create itself. That's right. That's right. Hmm? Yes, sir. It takes a faith based on nothing to believe it created itself. Mm -hmm. I believe this book. Amen. Genesis 1-1. Amen. In the beginning, That's right. God created the heavens and the earth. If he did, and we're convinced he did, that's power. What kind of power is that? Should you respect that kind of power? Yes. What kind of power? That's why, see, God is saying in the middle of them choosing to worship and pray to rocks and worship the sun that he made and the moon that he made and, and, and nature that he made, He's saying, what will you compare me to? What are you trying to say that's equal to me? Read it again. He said, lift up your eyes on high. Romans 1 tells us this, that even God's power and, and uh, the Godhead is revealed in the things that are seen. Don't just, don't just let this pass you by. When you drive by a tree today, how did that tree get here? Huh? When you look at a flower, when you breathe the air, how did air get here? Gravity's holding your feet on the ground. What is gravity? How did it get here? You really going to believe it created itself with no proof? None. Then you are a believer of a different kind. <laughs> and to believe something with no evidence 
is to presume and assume. And that's deadly dangerous. No, he said, he brings out the host by number. He calls them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one fails. The New Testament said all things are upheld by the word of his power. What is keeping our sun burning? The word of his power. And all the other stars in all the other systems. What's keeping gravity going? What's keeping the oceans in their basins? What's keeping the tectonic plates from just shifting and blowing this thing out? I mean, there's enough magma in the center of this thing to destroy this thing before the day's over. What is preventing it from it just blowing like a bomb? Something is keeping it together. Those who study physics are amazed at the atom. One of the most astounding things is what keeps it from flying apart? Well, that's what you're made of, right? (laughs) What keeps you from just flying apart? (laughs) There's a simple one-word answer. Help me out, help me out. God, for that he is mighty in power. The stars don't fail. Gravity doesn't fail. And he's already told us he's he's got other plans for us than this. All of this is temporary. And he's redoing everything. (laughs) Talk about a remodel. (laughs) He's redoing the heavens and the earth because sin is has messed it up. And he's going to redo it. He's going to create a new heavens and earth wherein is no curse. Now we've never been in a place like that. But it's going to be wonderful. Somebody say wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There won't be any violence in it. The animals won't kill each other. You can run through the jungle barefoot and never hit a thorn and the tiger won't bother you unless you want him to. You can wrestle him if you want to. <laughs> will that be amazing or will that be amazing? Huh? Is, is this in the Bible? It is. It is. Keep reading. He said verse uh, 26, for that he is strong in power Not one fails. Keep going. Why sayest thou, Jacob, and speakest thou, Israel, my ways hid from the Lord, my judgment is passed over from my God? Scripture says nothing is hidden from him. Everything is open before his eyes. Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not Neither is weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. There's no limit. There's no end to it. Now, that's, that's tough for our minds to grasp hold of. But what kind of understanding does it take to create a universe? And not just to create our bodies, but to create our spirits and our minds. What kind of being does it take to to do this? The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he doesn't get tired. (laughs) See, this is a concept because everything we know down here runs out, right? Winds down, Hmm? gets weak, goes from full to empty. (laughs) to fully charged, to dead, right? Every morning you get up, you got some energy, and then after a while, not so much. (laughs) Huh? But not God. Not God. We, we, We read he doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. 
He doesn't need to. He, he never gets weak or weakened or tired. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are his children, and this is what we have to look forward to past this life. Amen. There's no searching of his understanding. Do you have faith in his power, friends? Amen. He gives power to the faint. Amen. When you've got so much power, you can give it away. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Does God have more than enough power? He's got oh, yeah. way more. He's got so much, he can give it away, and he's still not depleted. <laughs> he can just give and give and give. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you feel faint today or tomorrow or the end of the week, you qualify. Yes. <laughs> and there is power available. Lay hold of it. One thing you can do, the scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. Quit talking about how weak you are and quit talking about how you feel. Focusing on your feelings is not walking by faith. You got to quit thinking about, quit talking about how you feel if you're going to experience manifestations of the power of God. You just have to make a change. You have to, have to change a gear. Because that, that's how the unsaved function and operate. We're not saying it's not there. We're not saying you don't feel weak. That's why you need strength. Because <laughs> exactly. you feel weak. Maybe your friends look at you and say, Ooh, you look bad. You look weak. You say, well, that's enough for that. Don't talk anymore about it. <laughs> what are we going to say? Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. And let the weak say... I am strong. I call my body strong. If you got a system that's been, let's say your immune system got weak, don't go tell everybody that your immune system has been weakened and damaged because of what you've been through. Oh, you can do it, but is that going to help you? All it's going to do is confirm in your mind that that's how it is, and if you call it the way it is, it's going to stay the way it is. What do you do? You're not saying it feels strong. You're not saying it looks strong. You're not saying if they tested you right now, it would come back and show that it was strong, which is why you need to call it strong. Right? Call. Call. I know my, I, I grew up in the country, and my little brother and, my, and myself and our cousins, we would play. I mean, it's wonderful to grow up in the country. Amen. We had hundreds of acres between uh, our property and other people's property that was undeveloped. It's just trees and grass and hills and streams. And man, when I was a little boy, I thought I was Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the Tarzan movies. I, I had the yell down just right. And we actually had vines in some of our big trees, and I would swing from the vines. And I, I found out that's not a good idea. Because <laughs> it didn't work out like the movie. They, they, they break and you fall. And <laughs> but, uh, you know, after running and hooping and hollering, and especially in the summertime when there was no school, swimming in the stream and the river and chasing this and chasing that, boy, you'd work up an appetite. You'd be hungry. And then we would hear mom calling calling our names, yelling for us to come into the house. And you know why she called us? Because we weren't there. Yeah. It, it was supper time uh, or lunch time. Provision had been made. There was a, a, a cobbler. There, there, there was a casseroles. Yeah. And we didn't have microwaves. Remember back then, no, no microwaves. No, no just add water, all that. Uh, oh man, and so you're hungry, and you know why uh, she called us? Because we weren't there. And she wanted us to come. So she called us, called my name, called my brother's name. She'd yell. It's amazing how far we could hear her yell. <laughs> Sound carried through there. 
And uh, we'd, we'd come a-running. We'd come a-running. And well, people sometimes say, well, I, I'm not going to call my, my immune system strong. If it's not, well, then don't call somebody to come to supper if they're not there. <laughs> the reason you call it is because you want it to come. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The reason you call it that way is you want it to become that way. Amen. Somebody try it out, out loud right now. I call my body strong. I call my immune system strong, robust, healthy, strong. Now, you don't have to feel good to say that. You don't have to look good to say that. That's what faith is all about. You don't see it. You don't feel it. That's why you're calling it. Here's another thing that will help you out. Say it out loud. I call. I call. My bills paid. My bills paid. <laughs> well, if they're not paid, I'm not going to call them pay. Well, you don't want it to come? <laughs> well, if it's already, already there, you wouldn't need to call it. It's amazing how folks struggle with this. But all you got to do is obey the Bible. Amen. If the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong, Quit trying to figure it out and argue with him. Just do what he said. Just, just call yourself strong and watch what happens. Yes. Say it out loud. I call, I call. every bill paid. Every bill paid. I, call I call every need met. Every need met. I call it that way. I call it that way. It. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you may want to rename your car. Somebody say, what model is that? You go, it's a, it's a late model paid for. It's a pay. What style house is that? It's a paid for. It's a paid for. What are you doing? You're calling it that. Amen. Well, you mean you, you don't owe the bank any, any money on it? Well, yeah. Yeah, there's still a balance there. But that's not what I'm focusing on. I'm doing something to cause it to, to come in. I'm calling it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm calling it. Amen. Come on in. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Somebody's getting it. Come on in. Amen. Come on in. I call it paid for. I call it paid off. Hmm? What if you got a bad eye? Why would you... Uh, Name it a bad eye. Why would you let somebody else name it and you accept that name? Got a bum knee. A bum knee. Hmm? <laughs> well, it's my, it's my tennis elbow. It's my uh, torn rotator cuff. Well, do you want it to stay that way the rest of your life? Do you want it to get worse? What do you do? I call my eye healed. I call my eye clear. I call my eye healthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I got a scratchy throat, scratchy throat, scratchy. Why don't you say I got a healed throat? It, it doesn't take any more breath, Right? doesn't take any more breath or effort to call it healed as it does to call it what it feels, which is what it already is, and it's not going to help you at all. You want to call something else into being. God is the God who calls those things that be not as though they were, and he teaches us to walk in the same faith. Hallelujah. These are the principles that created the principles of the power that created the universe. Because when God called light into being, it wasn't there until he called it into being. And you and I are created in his likeness and image, and that's how there's no better way to function. And you're not going to access his power unless you function that way. He doesn't faint he never runs out of power and strength. He is the inexhaustible, unlimited source Hallelujah. of strength and might 
and power. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, sometimes you hear people say this, well, I, I, I don't know that I want to bother the Lord with that. I want to bother the Lord. You underestimate his abilities. I think some people have had the idea that God, you know, is on the throne at the heavenly switchboard. And he's old, really old. I mean, long white beard, beard, wrinkles on top of wrinkles. I mean, he's old, old. <laughs> and uh, prayer calls are coming in. And so the, the, the cable and jack board is lighting up. And so here's a prayer call from the president, and from the king, and from the prime minister, and, and, and from the, uh, the orphan, and the widow, and the soldier in the foxhole. And man, this thing is lit up. And there's even some uh, beads of perspiration on God's <laughs> forehead because of all. And you're thinking, well, I don't, you know, my little thing, I don't want to bother the Lord with that. There ain't no heavenly switchboard. Exactly. People say, well, you know, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Well, no, you don't have to call him up. Uh, you can just talk to him. And he doesn't even have a computer. A computer would be like an ox cart to him. What would he want with such a primitive thing? No, God is on the throne. We have uh, descriptions of it in different places in the Word of God. It's the powerful, powerful seat of power of the universe. And the Bible said light and power comes out of his hands. And the angels that are around him are mighty, mighty in power. And uh, when he speaks, thunders and lightnings and well, you can imagine what is keeping the universe sustained. It's all of this power. And he has the ability to hear everybody's prayer at once and distinguish it all. And he's not old. He's not aging. There's no limit to his understanding, the scripture said, and he never uh, faints or weakens or gets tired. And he can answer everybody's prayer and help you with the smallest of things. At the same time, help you find your lost car keys. <laughs> At exactly the same time, he's answering a million other prayers. Doesn't bother him. Not limiting him. In fact, if every, all of the seven, eight billion people on the planet made a demand on his power at exactly the same moment, he could manifest the answer to all those prayers at the same time and the lights in heaven wouldn't even flicker. Hallelujah. Because he, he, does, he doesn't weaken. And he is your father. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say the Almighty. The Almighty. The creator of the heavens and the earth. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Is my father. Is my father. Whew. Hallelujah. My father. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say my father. He's my, he's my father and he's my good. Good father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's made the earth by his power and he stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Oh, hallelujah. There's so much we don't see and understand, but we can accept it by faith. We can rejoice in it by faith. Do you? Look with me, if you would, in Matthew 22. Do you have faith yes. in the power of God? Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. The more we have faith in God's power, the less affected we are by other things and, and the less 
uh, the limitations come off. And like we were talking earlier, you stop looking to men. You know they can't do it anyway. So you know who to look to. Right? You, you, just, you just don't even bother them. You don't pull on them. You just go straight to the source. And know that not only can he, but he wants to. He is good. In, uh, in the scriptures, Matthew 22, we see Jesus confronted by some of the religious people of his day. And uh, they, part of the group is a group called the Sadducees. Two of the main groups of religious folks in that day were the Pharisees and then also the, the Sadducees. And uh, one of the things that distinguished the Sadducees is that they didn't believe in spirit and they didn't believe in life after death. Now, why would you want to go to that church? <laughs> <laughs> that one I hadn't figured out. <laughs> now it's it. But uh, <laughs> verse 23, they came to Jesus because Jesus is teaching and emphasizing spirit. And he talks about and he deals with spirits. And uh, he talks about resurrection. And life after death. And so this is rubbing the Sadducees the wrong way. Because big crowds are, are flocking to Jesus. And going to his meetings. And listening to everything he's saying. And he's talking a lot about spirit. Spirit reality. Don't you remember he said God is spirit. And he seeks those to worship him in spirit. And in truth. He said the words I speak unto you. They are spirit. And they are life. Hallelujah. And if you believe on me, you will never die. Well, man, this is just really uh, plowing crosswise of the Sadducees' teachings and their new books that they've just published. <laughs> and everything else. And so they, uh, they, they, they put their little brains together and they came up with something to stump. Jesus and to publicly prove that there's nothing to this uh, spirit stuff and, and this, this, you know, resurrection stuff. They came and they say there is no resurrection. There is none. Now, uh, why would this be in the Bible? Are there any groups of people today that believe the same thing? Yeah. That if it's not material, if it's not physical, it doesn't exist. And that when you die, that's it. Curtains, lights out, the end. And that there has never been and there never will be any resurrection. There is no life after death. Are there any groups like that today? Oh, well, they're all over the place. And they are in the same group as the Sadducees. And... Uh, they say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, verse 24, they said, Master Moses said, so see, they're quoting scriptures. And they, they think they're setting him up. They said, Moses said, if a man dies and have no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed to his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers, and the first when he married a wife, uh, he deceased, and having uh, no issue, left his wife to his brother. Now, that deceased, see, they mean that's it, the end. Likewise, the second and the third unto the seventh. In other words, uh, every one of the seven brothers uh, married the woman after the previous brother died. And now, verse 27, last of all, the woman died also. So uh, she'd, been, she'd been married seven times to seven brothers because every one of them died before she died, and then she died. And so they said, verse 28, Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Won't that be a problem? 
Now, you're laughing, but I've heard people say the same thing. Well, you know, I've had, had children and grandchildren ask me, they said, well, you know, Daddy got remarried after Mom passed on. And uh, she's a believer too. So when they get to heaven, whoo, what in the world? What are we going to do? Because I, I don't think Mom would go for that. <laughs> This is ignorance of spiritual things going on. And see, they thought, well, we got him, okay, because they did this publicly, you know, and they teed this up and they said, so um, in this resurrection, you know, when people raise from the dead, uh, whose wife would she be? Husband number one, three. Five, six, seven, two. How's she going to pick? What, they, what in the world are they going to do? Verse 29. Jesus said, you do err. You are off. Why? You don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. How many know the scriptures will answer your questions? You know what else will answer your questions? The power of God. What do you mean? Well, how, how in the world that, could that be? The answer to some questions is as simple as that. The power of God. Hmm? How, what, what if my body's been dead for a thousand years? And what if you, can't even, you couldn't even find the gravesite anymore? How in the world will it be raised from the dead? The power of God. Well, they removed my uh, you know, two-thirds of my liver. How, how, how in the world could I ever function again? The power of God. Well, there's not even any cartilage left in that joint. Uh, how in the world could it function normally without pain anymore? Come on, help me out. Help me out. Help me out. I, the power of God. The power, if he can create the universe, why couldn't he recreate a knee? Why would that stump him? Would God ever look at you and go, man, you really messed that knee up. What did you, what did you do? <laughs> it's got to be so easy for him. It's got to be. How would it compare to creating a star or creating a whole human body or a brain? And that's just the physical shell, the spirit, the mind, which are eternal. It's not hard for him. Nothing's too hard for him. He said, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Keep reading. He gives the answer. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. What did he say? It's going to be a different situation. It's not going to be a problem. So why worry your little head about it down here right now? You're just wasting. You could be having fun. And here you're going, this is perplexing me. <laughs> Whose wife will she be? You're just acting dumb. I'm, I'm well convinced. Past this life, we'll look back and go, why did I fret over that? Why did I let myself be bothered for days, months over that? Why? Why did that? That was so foolish. That was so foolish. And again, it comes back to not trusting in the scriptures and trusting in the power. Oh, somebody say power. Trust, trusting in the power. That's the answer to a lot of questions. How in the world could, could God get the money to me to pay all my bills and get this thing caught up? I don't, I don't know where it could come from. You don't have to know where it could come from. You know who. You know who? And can he do it? Yes. Can he do All you got to believe is that he can do it. Yes. He has the ability. He has the power. He has the resources. He has the knowledge. He has the connections. Amen. Can he do it or not? Yes. He can do it. Somebody say he can do it. He can do it. Yes. He can do it. Keep reading. Keep reading. He said, uh, but it's touching the resurrection of the dead. Have you not read? Because see there, they don't know the scriptures. And the thing is, they are doctors of the law. 
They've got advanced degrees in theology. It's, the scriptures are supposed to be their whole life. And they are pitifully ignorant of the scriptures. Just because you've been around something a long time doesn't mean you understand it or that it's in you. Do you believe that like the scripture says, these words are life and spirit Amen. and light? Hallelujah. Amen. Then you ought to feed on them. And, and, and I've heard people say, well, I, you know, the Bible, who can understand it? You can understand it. Yeah. Amen. But if you start off in unbelief, you're saying, well, there's no need to even try. I can't get anything out of it. Well, you're defeated before you ever start. You got to start with some faith. Amen. Saying, the Lord will help me. I can see things out of this. You don't have to get everything about everything in the verse. The Lord will quicken something to you. You'll get some light. And in his light, you'll be able to see more light. And as you go month after month and year after year, oh man, you start seeing more and more how this is connected with this over here and this over here. And it's all interconnected and it just begins to open up to you more and more. And it changes your life. It gives you life. He said, but it's touching the resurrection of the dead. Have you not read? That was like slapping them with a wet dishcloth. <laughs> Have you never read the scriptures? <laughs> Where'd you go to school? <laughs> Have you not read that which was spoken to you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now, this is so, this is so amazing. Get this church. How many times had they read that? Oh, man, they could have probably, they could have quoted, you know, the original Hebrew words and the definitions and everything else. And yet, it's right in front of them. It's staring them right in the face. I am the God of Abraham. Not was. <laughs> huh? Oh, come on. Can you see that? What, what does that tell you? Abraham's still around. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God's not the God of the dead. Right. People that don't exist anymore. Right. He's not saying I am the God of all these people that are no longer existent. Right. He's the God of the living. Yes, he is. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. But see, you got to believe in the power of God yes. to believe that. You got to believe that there's life in the spirit that exists after death, you got to even believe that there's power that can raise a dead body from the dead Amen. and raise it in such a way incorruptible, immortal, so that it never again dies. It's never again subject. The power of an endless life, the power of eternal life, only a God who never gets weak could sustain such a thing. Amen. And that's already happened in the life of the believer whose spirit has been born again. Soon our body will be changed to match. If you have not allowed that to happen for you, don't wait another moment. Amen. Today's your day. Can you say amen? Stand on your feet, everybody. Today is your day to come to the Lord, to come back to the Lord. But you have to make a choice once and for all that you believe in the scriptures and in the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Just close your eyes. We got people watching on the internet, lots of different places. We got folks with us, family, as well as people visiting with us, new friends here and in Branson. Friend, it's not okay to say, well, I, you know, I'll think about this and we'll see about later. Well, later turns into a day and a month and a year and 10 years and, and who knows how long you've got left, especially outside of God. You can be taken in a moment and not be ready to go. Do not put this off another minute. Make a decision that you believe in God you believe his word. You believe in his power. Said out loud, every, every voice, nobody's silent. Said out loud, Father God, Father God, 
I believe in you. I choose to believe in your holy word and that you sent your son Jesus supernaturally born of a virgin and that he lived and died and paid the price on the cross for all my sins. Every failure, every mistake I have ever made or ever will make. And I do believe in your power that you raised him from the dead. And he is alive right now. King of kings, Lord of lords, soon to come again. Jesus, I confess you as the Lord of my life. And I believe in your power to save me, to change me, to keep me, to heal me, to help me. I have faith in your amazing power. Praise God. Praise God. Lift your hands. Lift your voices. Give thanks.